This video will walk you through polynomial transformations using SPSS. We're looking at the data set Telmarks 5, which is giving us information about calls over the last 20 days and the number of months that the telemarketer has been on the job. So the first thing we're going to do is graph this data. So I'm going to go into graphs and then go into legacy dialog and select scatter plot down here. Simple scatter plot, okay, and then select define. I want to look at the relationship between the number of months on the job and calls. So months is going to be my x axis and calls is going to be my y axis. Move that over here. Go under options. And okay, so uh, there's nothing special I want to do here. So I'm just going to click continue and then click OK. Now I see that the chart that has been made and I see kind of uh, the number as the number of months increases, the number of calls increases, but at a decreasing rate. So this tells me this is probably some sort of polynomial relationship. And then I want to see like what else can I do? How can I augment this graph to show me that relationship a little bit more? So I'm going to double click here and it's going to bring up my chart editor. I'm going to click here on these lines and I already have linear with my R squared. Let's see what happens if I add quadratic and click apply. Okay, so I'll close that. I have my quadratic relationship. Let's go back in there and add my cubic relationship. Okay, let's say apply and close that. Now I have quadratic and cubic. I see the cubic has a, you know, a slightly higher R squared, so that might be a little bit better. And then let's just for comparison's sake go back in there and also stick the linear regression in there as well just to be able to see that. Click apply and then click close. So now I have all three potential graphs um, drawn out there for me just showing me my R squareds. And I can close this chart dialog editor box and I'll have that information there. All right, so now to actually perform the regressions, I have two different options on how to do this. The first way is to go in and transform the variable months into months squared and months to the third. So I'm going to go into transform and then compute variable. My target variable is going to be months squared. So that's the first one I'm going to create. Okay, and that is equal to months. I just clicked the over because months was already highlighted. Times months. Yeah, click on months again. Okay, months times months. And hit enter. And okay. Oh, I put a space in there. Hold on, sorry. Months square. Okay. Click okay. And go back into my data and I have months squared. I can also, in case I wanted to do, you know, a cubic relationship, compute variable months cube. Okay, and that is equal to months times months times months, or months squared times months. Either one would have worked. Okay, and then click OK down here. Sorry, the mouse is hard to see. And unresponsive on videos. Okay, and then back to my data set here, and I have months, months squared, and months cubed. So I can now go into analyze, into regression, and linear regression. My dependent variable is calls. Come on, where's the mouse? Okay. My independent variable, I want to do this in three separate blocks. So my first independent variable is just months. Then I'll click on next here. My second independent variable is months squared. Now when I do the blocks, it adds the previous independent variables in as well. And that's important when I'm doing uh, you know, when, when I'm doing my polynomial transformations, because anytime you have a higher order term, you also need to include the lower order term. And then I'm going to do my third block, which is going to have months cubed in there as well. So put that in. 
and statistics, I would like to see the R squared, the confidence interval, and descriptive statistics. Click continue and click OK. So now it's going to give me my regression information. I can scroll down here and I see for my three models, model one is just using months, so X is months and Y is calls. Model two has months and months squared and then model three has months, months squared and months cubed. I can see all three are squareds in there and I can see all three standard errors. So I see that uh, my R squared goes up for all, you know, in, in each of the three models, but my standard error is actually higher in the cubic model than it is in the quadratic model. So that tells me that my quadratic model is probably better than my cubic model when I'm doing my analysis. And the other thing I want to look at is the p-value of the highest ordered term. And I see that when I go into the cubic, my months cubed is not statistically significant, but months squared is. So even though just looking at the R squared, it looked like the cubic transformation was the best, I can see when I compare my um, R squared, my standard error, and the p-value of my highest order term that actually the appropriate transformation for this is just a quadratic transformation, not a cubic transformation. The other option that I have is instead of transforming those variables individually, I just could have gone into analyze and done regression curve estimation where my dependent variable is months and my independent variable, it, sorry, um, let's bring those out of there. My, click back here, come on, let me edit, okay. Okay, my dependent variable is calls, sorry. My independent variable is months. And then I can select linear, quadratic, and cubic because I want to look at all of those. I want it to plot the models. And then make sure I also select their display ANOVA results because that way I'm going to get my R squareds and my standard errors as well. So I can click OK and I can look at this output and it's actually going to do it in three separate calculation. So first it does my linear and I have my R squared and my standard error of my estimate in there as well as the p-value on my months and then it does the quadratic transformation. So months and months squared and I can look at the p-value there as well as the R squared and the standard error of my estimate and then it finally it does the cubic and it goes through and it plots those relationships for me. So either one is a perfectly acceptable way to go about running these analyses.